Hello everyone, I am Dr. Smriti Tripathi from Applied Science and Humanities Department, Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College, Ghaziabad. This video lecture is for Mathematics 4, which has code KAS 302 or 402. Today we are discussing applications of partial differential equations. In that, our subtopic is solution of heat conduction equation in one dimension. We will take some extra examples also in this video lecture. But before taking examples, we will understand that what is the solution of the heat conduction equation when it is in one dimension. Now, what is one dimensional heat flow? Here, we are, we will assume that we have a bar of length, some length. Its one end is at zero. It means it, its one end is at origin and the whole heat is flowing towards x axis. M means heat flow is along x axis. Let the temperature of the bar at any time T and at any point x, what is x here? x is the distance. Let us suppose we are talking about at this point. So, at this point x is distance and we are taking this uh, temperature at this point at any time t. So, we can say that let us say the temperature is u x t because this way temperature becomes function of distance and time. Then the equation of one dimension, the dimensional heat flow is del 2 u by del t is equal to del 2 u by del x 2. So, this is the heat equation for one dimension. Now, let us see what is the solution of one dimensional heat equation by the method of separation of variables. So, as we know that the heat equation is del, to, del u upon del t is equal to c square del 2 u upon del x 2. Now, let us say this is equation number 1. We will find the solution of this one dimensional heat equation by the method of separation of variables. So, let us see how to find the solution of this equation by method of separation of variables. For that, as we already know that the method of separation for method of separation of variables, we assume that let u is a function of x and t and that is why we will suppose here that u is a function of capital X and capital T. Now, here capital X is a function of small x only and capital T is a function of small t only. It means capital X is a function of small x only and capital T is a function of small t only. Now, when we will differentiate this equation number 2, 2 times with respect to x, it means we if we are calculating del 2 u upon del x 2, we will get, see, if I write it here, it will be del 2 u by del x 2 is equal to del 2 capital X upon del X 2 into T. Now, as we are doing the partial differentiation, hence this capital T will be treated as a constant and we cannot differentiate this with respect to this T with respect to X. Hence, we will get X double dash T and similarly, when we will differentiate u with respect to t, we will not differentiate this capital X 
and we will differentiate only capital T with respect to T and hence we will get capital X into T dash. Now we will substitute this value of del 2 u by del x2 is equal to x double dash t and this value of del 2 u by del t in equation number 1. What is equation number 1? It is del u by del t is equal to c square del 2 u by del x2. Now when I will substitute here the values I will get x t dash is equal to c square x double dash t. Now we are separating the variables. When we are separating the variables, we will take all x in LHS and all t in RHS and this way we will get equation 3. Now please see very carefully that the LHS of 3 is a function of x only and the RHS of this equation 3 is a function of t only where x and t, now you see please here since x and t are independent variables, then this equation cannot hold only, okay. It can hold if we are reducing both sides to some constant value k and then equation 3 leads to the ordinary differential equation. Now what will be the differential equation which, which we will get when we are equating it to equal to some constant k. So, we will get x double dash upon x is equal to 1 upon c square t, t dash upon t is equal to k. So, we can say that we will also get x double dash upon x is equal to k and 1 upon c square t dash upon t is equal to k. Now, <coughs> I am writing these equations in the derivative form. So, this will become d2x upon dx2 minus kx is equal to 0 and we will also get dt up, d capital T upon dt minus kc square capital T is equal to 0. On solving equation this 4, it means this equation and this equation. See, we will get some solution, but here there is a question that what should we choose k? We can solve these equations for k, but k can have different values. So, let us consider it the value of k in three parts. First, I am taking that when k is positive. So, when k is positive, it means we can assume it as equal to p square. So, let us say k is equal to p square. So, this p square I will substitute it here in equation number 4 and we will get d2 capital X upon dx2 minus p square capital X is equal to 0. And for t also we will get d capital T upon dt minus p square capital T is equal to 0. Now, if I want to write or if I am writing this d by dt dx is equivalent to capital D and as well as d by dt is equivalent to capital D because we know that when we solve any differential equation, we assume operator is equal to capital D. So, hence this becomes D capital D square capital X minus P square capital X is equal to 0 and capital D capital T minus P square C square capital T is equal to 0. Now, see from here we will get auxiliary equations. So, 
the auxiliary equation for this will be d square minus p square is equal to 0 and for this equation it is d is equal to p square c square. On solving because since this is a second order differential equation the roots of the equation will be plus minus p and another one is has only one root that is p square c square. So, by second order differential equation formula of writing complementary function, we will get c1 e to the power px plus c2 e to the power minus px and the capital T is equal to c3 e to the power p square c square t. Now, in this particular equation, Please see very carefully, we do not have RHS, hence the general solution of this equation will be only complementary function, it will not be plus particular integral. So, we need, no, no, need not to worry for PI because there is RHS is equal to 0. Now, we got the value of capital X and we got the value of capital T what actually we want? We want u is equal to x t. What we want actually? We want u is equal to x t. So, what I will do? I will substitute the value of capital X and the value of capital T in equation number 1. See, this is equation number 1 and we will substitute the value of capital X and capital T in this equation. On writing this, we will get u is equal to c1 e to the power px plus c2 e to the power minus px into c3 e to the power p square c square t and let us say it is equation number 5. So, you please see here very carefully, I got, we got one equation for k positive. Now, let us assume that k is negative and say it is minus p square, then wherever there was k, it will come minus p square and we will get the equation d2 capital X upon d small x2 plus p square capital X is equal to 0 and d capital T upon dt plus p square c square capital T upon 0. On writing it in as auxiliary equation, again we will get d square plus p square is equal to 0 and d plus p square c square is equal to 0 and the roots which we get that will be d is equal to plus minus p i and d is equal to minus p square c square. Now, once again this equation does not have RHS, so we will not get particular integral here. So, the general solution will be only complementary function and our capital X will be c1 cos p x plus c2 sin p x because this time the roots are imaginary and we all have studied that whenever the roots are imaginary, the complementary function comes in sine and cosine form. And similarly, capital T, capital T is for first order differential equation. So, for capital T, it will be C3 e to the power minus p square c square t. Once again, I will put this capital X and capital T in u is equal to capital X t. So, whenever I will write the value of capital X and capital T in u, we will get u is equal to c1 cos p x plus c2 sin p x into c3 e to the power minus p square c into e to the power minus p square c square t. So, this way we got two solutions for u, one is when k is positive, another one is when k is negative.
but it is not necessary that always k is uh, having some value k can be zero as well so we should not forget third case now let us find out the what will be the value of u when k is equal to zero so we will substitute k is equal to zero in this equation see i'll again mention equation this uh, in this equation so this here once again i will mention in equation number 4 again i will mention the we will put the value of k is equal to 0 and uh, in the next also 40 also k is equal to 0 when i will put k is equal to 0 we will get d2x upon dx2 is equal to 0 and d capital t upon dt is equal to 0 and then we will get d2 capital x is equal to 0 and dt is equal to 0 and uh, again here the roots are what d is equal to 0 and 0 and we all know whenever the roots are equal and real then the complementary function becomes c1 plus c2 x into e to the power 0 x e to the power 0 x will become equal to 1 hence our answer will be only capital x is equal to c1 plus c2 x and similarly capital t will be equal to c3 because once again we have only one root here d is equal to 0 we don't have two roots so it will be only c3 and once again i will substitute capital x and capital t in u is equal to xt and we got the third solution as u is equal to c1 plus c2 x into c3 now we got three solutions please see very carefully in one solution we have u is equal to c1 e to the power px plus c2 e to the power pi minus px and c3 e to the power p square c square t we always know that in the real world whenever time increases temperature decreases whenever we boil tea and we keep it uh, you know as it is on the platform then key with respect to time the temperature of tea does not increases it decreases anything with the increase of time temperature decreases but here we have an exponential function which is always an increasing function and he, in this e to the power p square c square t we have t so this shows that as t increases u also increases but this is not possible in the real world so this solution is rejected we cannot consider this solution now come to the next solution here again we have e to the power minus p square c square t see earlier we were having e to the power p square c square t which was an increasing function and now in this equation number 6 we have e to the power minus p square c square t which is an decreasing function which says that as t which which says that as t increases temperature decreases and actually the same thing happens okay so that is why this solution can be accepted now come to the third solution let us check whether this third solution is accepted or not now we all know that in the real world temperature decreases as time increases if we are not giving any outside force to heat so <coughs> here but here please see very carefully that equation this equation is independent of time it means if uh, uh, if t is hot then it will remain hot after one hour but that is not possible in real world it is not possible hence this solution is also rejected so this way we got that 
the solution which contains cosine and sine function as well as e to the power minus p square c square t is only accepted. So, this was the solution of one dimensional heat equation. Now, let us go with some example and try to understand that if it is given with some conditions, then how to find the solution of one dimensional heat equation. Now, we have a question and the question says that a rod of length, a rod of length L with insulated sides is initially at a uniform temperature U0. Its ends are suddenly cooled to 0 degree Celsius and are kept at that temperature. Now, they are asking they find the temperature function uxt. This means they are saying that there is a rod which has a length L and it is its sides are insulated and it is initially at temperature u0. Please uh, remember that that u is a function of x and t where u says temperature here x we mean to say that x is distance and t is time so they are saying initially at temperature u0. Initially at temperature u0 means when time is equal to 0 means when t is equal to 0 whatever x is there the temperature is capital U0. It is given in the question and they are also saying its ends are suddenly cooled to 0 degree Celsius. Ends means if we have a rod here so its and we suppose that it is kept on x axis with one and at origin. So, this here x is equal to 0 and here x is equal to L because the length of the rod is L. So, it means at first stand when x is 0 and time is any time t, it is given that u means temperature u is 0. And similarly, at the another end, when x is equal to L, u is again 0 at any time t. So, these three conditions are given to us. Based on these three conditions, we have to find the temperature function uxt. Once again, we will find the solution. We already did the solution in the previous slide, but let us take a look and then we will apply the boundary conditions. So, once again, I will assume that the solution is u is equal to capital X and capital T, where capital X is a function of small x only and capital T is a function of small t only. If it is so, we will again find del 2u by del x2, which we will get x double dash capital T and del u by del t, which we will get capital X t dash we will substitute these values in equation number 1. What is equation number 1? u is equal to equation number 1 is here del u by del t is equal to c square del 2 u by del x2. We will substitute the value of del u by del t here. So, see in place of del u by del t we have kept x capital X t capital T dash and another is c square x x double dash t. Again on separating the variables, we will take all variables of x in LHS and all variables of t in RHS. Then we will get x double dash upon x is equal to 1 upon c square t dash upon t. And once again, this cannot hold an equation until we reduce it to a constant k as I told you in the earlier slide. So, we have to assume that this is equal to minus p square. Now, now this in this slide, I will not explain you that why minus p square because I have already told you in the previous slide that if we are taking p 
plus p square the solution will be rejected and again if we are taking 0 again the solution is rejected we will get only the real world related solution when we are assuming it as the constant as equal to minus p square. Okay, so now let us start with minus p square and when we solve it with minus p square again with the same procedure we will get the solution u is equal to c1 cos px plus c2 sin px into c3 e to the power minus p square c square t and let us say it is equation number 5. Now, now from here this question takes a little turn. In this particular question, we got the solution, but in this question, we have the boundary conditions and initial condition. What is the meaning in a question to have a boundary condition or in initial condition? If the question gives us boundary condition and the initial conditions, it means we have to calculate the value of all the constants involved in the solution because the values of the constants were not given to us. So, that is why we have to calculate these values. It means our purpose is to find out C1, C2, C3 and P. So, now what we will do? We will apply all the boundary conditions one by one and find the values of C1, C2, P and other constants. So, for that what I will do? We will substitute condition u 0 to is equal to 0 in equation number 5. What is equation number 5? Equation number 5 is this. So, what they are saying? They are saying that put u is equal to 0. I will solve it for you. Here u 0 t, it is given as equal to 0. Now, this is c 1 cos 0 plus c 2 sin 0 into c3 e to the power minus p square c square t. Now, see cos 0 is always 1. So, we will get c1 plus 0 into c3 e to the power minus p square c square t. Now, from here please see very carefully this is a complete solution for t. None of the constant from here we can take it as 0 because we are not doing any changes in t. t is we are keeping constant. So, that is why this in the solution also we cannot make any changes. We are doing the changes only in x is e in x which is we are taking x is equal to 0. So, that is why we can take the constants of x only. So, from here this c 3 e to the power minus p square c square t cannot be 0 then what must be 0? implies c 1 is 0 because there are only two factors one is c 1 and other one is c 3 e to the power minus p square c square t. So, if this is not 0 this must be equal to 0 because the right hand side or LHS value is or the equate value equating value is equal to 0. So, that is c 1 is equal to 0. So, that is what we got here. Now, on substituting c 1 is equal to 0 in equation number 5, we will get u is equal to because u now there will be no c 1. So, c 1 will not come. So, we will get u is equal to c 2 sin p x into c 3 e to the power minus p square c square t. Now, in this equation number 6, again we will substitute condition number 2 means for another end which is given to us u l t is equal to 0. What does it mean u l t is equal to 0? This means x is equal to l and t will remain as equal to t. When it is so x is l and t is t it is given u is equal to 0 to us. So, now let us substitute here u is equal to 0. I have kept here 0 and this is c 2 sin p l. Why l? Because I have substituted x is equal to l and this will remain as it is because we are not doing any changes in t. So, we will get c 2 sin p l into c 3 e to the power minus p square c square t. Now, once again as we are not doing or, or we are not changing anything in t, the so, so the solution of t will not be changed. Hence, we will check only with the solution of x. So, now here 
C2, C1 is already 0 because we know the solution of u is equal to C1 cos Px plus C2 sin Px into C3 e to the power minus P square C square T. This already you have taken 0. So, it will be 0. If by default you are taking C2 is equal to 0, then complete u will become 0. So, please keep it remember that u cannot take C2 cannot be taken as equal to 0 because if you are taking C2 as equal to 0, complete u will become 0 and this means there is no system. So, it is not possible. Hence, what to take as equal to 0? Sin PL is as equal to 0. So, sin PL is equal to 0 is equal to, so when sin, sin is 0, sin is 0 whenever we have sin n pi. For every value of uh, n pi, sin is 0. So, if sin PL is equal to sin n p, this implies PL is equal to n p and this implies p is equal to n pi by L. Now, n can be any integer. So, from here we will get p is equal to n pi by l. So, please keep this remember that we got two values. One is c1 is equal to 0 and another one is p is equal to n pi by l. So, this way we got two constants. Now, <laughs> equation 6 will be will again be converted when we put the value of p is equal to n pi by l. Now, let us see what system 6 becomes on substituting substituting the value of p is equal to n pi by l. So, when we will put p is equal to n pi by l, we will get u is equal to c2 c3 sin n pi x upon l into e to the power minus n square pi square c square and here it is n square pi square c square by l square. So, we will get the solution u is equal to c2 c3 sin n pi x upon l into e to the power minus n square pi square c square upon l square into t. Now, here once again we have a very important factor that let us say that in place of these two constants c2 c3 we have only one constant bn or you can say assume or let c2 c3 is equal to bn because th these are two constants we can merge it in one constant. So, we will get one con uh, constant that is bn. So, let us say it is bn. Now, remember that that if we are taking n is equal to 1 we get one solution of u. If we are taking n is equal to 2, we will get another solution of u and similarly for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, we are always getting a, a new solution for u. So, by the method of superposition, we will get a most general solution which is say u is equal to xt and we can write as summation n is equal to, I am sorry, summation n 1 to infinity bn. So, the most general solution is u x t is equal to summation n is equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n pi x upon l into e to the power minus n square pi square c square upon l square into t and let us say this is equation number 7. Now, we will apply the last condition. What is last condition? Only one condition is rest. The, so, we, we are saying it as last condition. So, that was the initial condition. Now, we will substitute initial condition u x 0 is equal to z u 0 in equation number 7 and when we will substitute it, we will get u x 0. x 0 means x is equal to x and t is equal to 0. So, u x is equal u x 0 will give us this value and the given value of it is u 0. 
So, it is equal to summation n 1 to infinity b n sin n pi x upon l. Why it is so? Because it will be give us e to the power minus 0 and e to the power minus 0 is nothing but 1. So, this way we are getting u 0 is equal to summation n 1 to infinity b n sin n pi x upon l. Now, this is also called as half range Fourier sign series. So, this is called half range Fourier sign series and from that concept we get the formula of B n as equal to 2 by L integral 0 to L u 0 sin n pi x upon L into dx. So, after integrating the value of b n, we will get the required result. So, this way we solve the given question. Now, let us discuss one more example. Now, in this question it is said find the temperature in a bar of length 2 whose ends are kept at 0 and lateral surface insulated if the initial temperature is sin pi x upon 2 plus 3 sin 5 pi x upon 2. Since they are talking about the bar, so we will assume that u x t be the temperature in the bar and the boundary conditions. They are saying that the ends are kept at 0. See, please pay attention here. They are saying that the ends are kept at 0. Hence, the initial conditions will be u 0 t is equal to 0 is equal to u 2 0. It means at two ends, at one end here, when x is 0, the temperature u is 0 and when x is equal to 2, here also temperature is 0. So, that is why we will get these two. And the initial condition they have given that u x 0 is equal to sin pi x by 2 plus 3 sin 5 pi x by 2. So, as we have already done two questions, we know that this is the heat equation and this will be the solution of the equation. On putting condition number 1, we always get C1 is equal to 0. On putting condition number 2, we will get P is equal to n pi by 2. Now, in this question, the, C, the calculation of C1 and P is as it is as we did it in the earlier question, only the changes will come in part 3. So, when we put condition number 3 here in this question, u x 0 is equal to sin pi x upon 2 plus 3 sin 5 pi x by 2, we will get sin pi x upon 2 plus 3 sin 5 pi x upon 2 is equal to summation n 1 is equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n pi x upon 2. When we expand this, we will get b 1 sin pi x upon 2 plus b 2 sin 2 pi x upon 2 plus b 3 sin 3 pi x upon 2. So, on comparison, we get b 1. Please see very carefully, this is sin pi x upon 2. We have here sin pi x upon 2. It is 1 here. So, what is b 1? b 1 is equal to 1. Similarly, sin 2 pi x upon 2 and here we do not have sin 2 pi x upon 2. So, b 2 is equal to 0. Sin 3 pi x upon 2 and again we do not have here sin 3 pi x upon 2. So, b 3 is 0. We have here sin 5 pi x upon 2, hence b 5 is equal to 3 and all other b i's are equal to 0. So, all other b i's will be equal to 0, we will have only, we will get only b 1 is equal to 1 and b 1 is, b 5 is equal to 3. So, we will get b 1 is equal to 1 and b 5 is equal to 3. On substituting the value of b 1 and b 3 in equation number 6, 
we will get this answer. So, in the previous question, we have integrated for calculating the value of b n and in this question, we have compared the equation with the initial condition to cal calculate the value of b n. Thank you very much for the video.